You may have heard of FIRE, financial independence, retire early, but did you know that real estate investing can get you to FIRE faster? Hi, I'm Tracy Royce, a real estate, longtime real estate investor and educator. And together with Azria, we're creating a FIRE subgroup for real estate investors or those who are aspiring to get to FIRE faster through real estate investing. This video is going to be the foundation for getting you on your FIRE path. We're going to talk about what is FIRE and what FIRE type are you, your financial formula, and then also budgeting. All of that is foundational. And if you can't join our class at Azria, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be dropping free gems throughout this entire video either way. Instead of me just talking about it, let me show you. So you might be familiar with the acronym Financial Independence Retire Early. In this video, we're going to be talking about just that with an emphasis on real estate investing. But what even is FIRE? Well, when we say retire early, that doesn't necessarily mean your age. You can reach FIRE at any point. And generally speaking, this comes from when you have enough income coming in from your investments to live the lifestyle that you choose because you've been intentional with your finances. Now, again, FIRE is more about a lifestyle, not just numbers, and it comes down to several different factors that we'll talk about in this video. So first things first, when we talk about getting you to FIRE, it's really important that you understand what your FIRE number is. The generally accepted formula is this. We wanna understand what is your annual spending? What am I going to spend on a yearly basis? We take that number and times it by 25. That is the amount of savings and investments that you'll need to have to be able to live off of with a withdrawal rate of 4%. This in and of itself gives you a really good aim of what to do with your finances right now so in the future you can enjoy living your FIRE lifestyle based off of your numbers. So let's look at a quick example. In this example, you know that your expenses are $4,200 a month. Now, if we look at that annually, that's the number that we're going to multiply by 25. That lands us at 1.25 million. That is the amount of savings that you'll need to be able to withdraw at a 4% withdrawal rate, $50,000 per year. So now let's talk about different fire types. There's generally three accepted different profiles and I wanna know which one that you are. So there's lean, there's fat, and then there's barista. So with lean fire, this has a emphasis on frugality. You don't mind living way below your means because getting to retirement faster is more important. Fat fire is forget that. I wanna live a good lifestyle and you're willing to work harder, maybe for longer, build up a ton more investments because you want that luxurious lifestyle. And this might be the only time that you want someone to call you fat. <laughs> and lastly, there's the barista fire. Maybe you do have good income coming in from your investments, but you also want healthcare through a corporate setting or you wanna work somewhere for the social stimulation. And so you keep a part-time job for those reasons. So let me know in the comments, are you a lean, fat, or barista fire type. One of the things that I think is important to emphasize at this point is that we all have different starting points. Let me show you an example. So let's say you start back here and you have food insecurity in your house, maybe for instance, or your parents were constantly saying things like, we can't afford that. What do you think I'm made of money? Or maybe you guys moved a lot and you just constantly felt like things were insecure. That can affect how you feel about money and also how you operate in the world. And this had nothing to do with you, but it sets you on a trajectory of how you go about living your life and especially financially. On the opposite end, let's say you start here, a two parent household perhaps that one of them had a business. They very much make you feel like you are secure. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. So when you go out into the world with that sort of mindset, you feel like it's okay to make mistakes or take big chances because you feel secure. So when people start to make remarks about getting ahead financially, it is important to note that if you're back here, you might have several several steps to just even be on the same playing field as where this person started from. And they're going to be potentially leaps and bounds ahead because of where they started off. So please be kind to yourself as you're going through this journey and maybe dig into more about the psychology of money and your own background as that might help you close the gap as to what, why some people seem to have it so easy and other people struggle financially. So let me ask you this as well. What do you think is the biggest factor to be able to get to fire? I'll wait. Do you think it's rich parents, where you live in the country, a better education, luck? Let me tell you. Here's the number one factor to get to fire. 
It's time, my friend. These things take time. And a lot of people don't want to tell you that, but to be able to get to FIRE, it's not six weeks or six months. This is a years long process that's also really satisfying because you develop the discipline around your vision and create that for yourself. And it also helps you develop the choices and decisions that you make on a day to day, week to week, month to month, and year to year basis. But if anyone tells you differently, this is not a get rich quick. It just takes some time. All right, so let's talk about the B word in financial literacy, budgeting and spending. So let me ask you a few questions before I talk more about the nuts and bolts of budgeting, which is why do you think a lot of people don't have a budget or don't stick to a budget? I have my own assumptions, but I'm curious as what you think. Leave it in the comments below. Why do you think most people don't have or keep to a budget? Secondly is why is a budget important? Well, it's a guiding principle, again, of not only what's important to you, but also again, having that long-term vision of being able to meet goals. And so I'm willing to sacrifice a little today to have a lot more later. Also, when it comes to your background, I really can't stress enough that money is such a subconscious thing that your relationship with money could have been started as early as your childhood before you really understood money as an adult, going to a job and making money and spending it. A lot of us treat it like something unconsciously that we just watched happen with our parents and we do the same things, which isn't always the correct thing or going to get you to fire. So I bring that up here again because I think it's really noteworthy to say, what did I grow up around? And is that how I want to continue to treat money or can I choose a better way? And if you're here, that means yes. So let's talk about the nuts and bolts of what your budget is. When we said monthly spending, it's going to take two types of costs into account, one of which is fixed and one of which is variable. So what are fixed costs? Well, fixed means they're static, they're not changing. You know what that bill is going to be on the first of the month. One of which is your rent. What is your rent payment? Or if you're a homeowner, what is your mortgage payment going to be? And that's inclusive of costs like your taxes, insurance, and also if you have an HOA. It's typically one of our biggest expenses, right? Is living expenses. Next is a car payment. If you have a car payment, that should be uh, a known payment that you have every month as well. And the car insurance. And also healthcare premiums. What is that going to cost on a monthly basis? Now this isn't all inclusive, but this is the majority of the costs that you'll have on a monthly basis that you know are going to stay fixed that you can budget easily for. The other part of this equation is talking about variable costs because, well, they can vary from month to month. So this is going to be things like your groceries, especially things like dining out and going out and spending money at bars and alcohol. Childcare can vary. Also, the type of sports and supplies that your kids needs, that can vary from season to season. Your utilities, like for instance, if you're paying for a lot of streaming, or your internet cost. Also entertainment, this can be a big one. If you travel quite a bit, if your hobbies are really expensive, or if you're bound to go to a Taylor Swift concert, that can also add up. Things like car maintenance, we do have to budget for that, but it is a variable cost. And then things like clothing and beauty. Obviously there's a wide range of what you can spend on any of these things, but these are all known as variable costs and we still have to budget for them on a monthly and yearly basis. And last but certainly not least, let's talk about the other part of our equation, which is debts and investments, because we have to budget for those as well. So first and foremost, student loans. If you're on a repayment plan or if you're working on paying those off, that can be part of your budget, as well as credit cards and personal loans that you might have taken out as well. You might be in a position to where you're already saving for retirement, and so you're putting money aside for that as part of your budget. Also for emergency funds, travel funds, things that are special to you that you want to budget for, like maybe a big Christmas, if you have a wedding coming up, or a college fund as well. Lastly, because this has an emphasis for real estate investors, we also can budget for a down payment for your first house or your first or next rental. These are all the debt and investment costs that we wanna consider when we're also creating and minding our budget. So when it comes to budgeting, another important outline that we should cover is the percentages. This gives you a easy 
the outline to think about where should my money be going on a monthly or yearly basis so I can spend in a way that's meaningful. Well, generally accepted is the 50, 30, 20% rule, where 50% of your money goes to needs or like we said, fixed costs. 30% goes to your wants, which can be mostly your variable costs. And then you're saving 20% of your income to go towards savings, retirement, debt repayment, these sort of things. So again, this is a really helpful formula that if you're starting from square one, think about dividing your money in such a way that 50% goes to needs, 30% to wants, and the rest goes to savings. Now for fire people, we typically wanna get this number up as much as possible, and we can talk about how do we spend within here to be able to get more here. So when it comes to spending your money, no one likes to feel budgeted. That's sort of a bad word sometimes. If we reframe it like conscious spending, that really puts the framework around a few different things that are more important. Like, what do you value? It's okay to spend on the things that you value as long as you're saving in the other areas that you really don't care about as much. Like if you dream of going to Taylor Swift concerts and that's your jam, then you should do it. But that also means pulling back in other areas that really aren't as important to you. Also, when it comes to conscious spending, looking at things that create bigger wins for you. We don't want to live in the spreadsheet as it's known to where we're counting every single penny. So where can you move the marker a lot such that you're setting yourself up for success? That can mean getting rid of your car payment, not eating out all the time, or looking at your budget to really reflect on, am I spending in areas that really aren't important to me and eliminating them altogether? And lastly, when you are going out and spending, asking yourself, why am I really buying this? And is it worth it? Stopping yourself before you make those impulse decisions because it's so easy to do that can be the difference of saving hundreds if not thousands of dollars a year or you having more stuff around you that you really don't care about and wondering why you're broke. As you're on this fire journey, inevitably you're going to come across someone that says, man, you are so cheap. Well, let's talk about the difference of being cheap versus frugal because one is a compliment and the other is condescending. So cheap people only care about cost. What is the cheapest thing that they can buy? Whereas people that are frugal, they just want the highest value out of something. Price is important, but they care about the value. Cheap people, again, they only want the lowest price. That's all that matters to them. Frugal people, well, kind of same thing. They want the lowest price, but also except for the things that they prioritize. On the things that they value, cost is a little bit less important. With cheap people, they expect free. They're kind of entitled. I'm sure you've seen these people. They just want to talk to the manager, expect things for free, use coupons that are a year old and they try to get away with it, right? It's kind of embarrassing. Whereas with frugal people, they'll wait for deals or try to make a deal. They'll negotiate, they'll trade. Now, what does this sound like? A real estate investor, right? So it kind of puts you in the mindset of being able to create a win-win situation just versus entitlement. Now, also with cheap people, they tend to buy low quality junk because again, all they care about is the cost. Whereas people that are frugal, they understand that it's actually better to spend as much as you can on quality items and make it last. Buy the best that you can afford. And lastly, cheap people think short term. They buy cheap crap, they want the lowest cost, and they just look sort of uh, can be sort of embarrassing for the people around them because all they care about is saving the most amount of money. Whereas people that are frugal, they care about the long term. They have a vision for their life and they're willing to prioritize and be okay with being frugal now so they can enjoy the massive rewards later. If you're a tactile learner, you might have even heard of the envelope method, where you literally take your paycheck and every paycheck, you divide them up just like those categories that we showed, and you put the cash into different envelopes. When that money in the envelope is gone, you've spent your budget. Have you used the envelope method? If you have, type envelope in the comments below. If you like this sort of information, make sure that you comment part two so we know that you like this sort of information. I've also listed several resources throughout this video and I'll post links for them in the description below. This FIRE subgroup hosted with the Arizona Real Estate Investors Association with yours truly as a teacher is hosted the third Tuesday of every month at the Arizona Real Estate Investors Association headquarters. If you're not in Phoenix, that's perfectly fine. Join us online and you can see the link below. We'll have more resources available and we'll also 
tap you in a community so you can go on this journey together. I'll see you very soon.